you fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fishing. Today we're going to be talking about a hospital tank. Why you need one, how to set one up, and uh, how to maintain a cycle in a hospital tank. Grab yourself a notebook, a pen, a healthy snack, and a beverage. Stand by. <laughs> All right, fishy folks, before we get started, I just want to say uh, I had the Rona, as many of you know. Uh, it was about two weeks of, of really feeling like poop, and uh, now I'm just pretty fatigued, and I still have a lingering cough a little bit, but uh, my taste buds are starting to come back, so that's good. But, you know, it's no joke. It's really no joke. People say it's just like a cold, or, oh, I know plenty of people that I've had it and didn't even know it, and that's fine. If you have it and you get sick, it sucks. And there's a lot of things after the fact, like lack of taste and smell, that don't happen with a regular cold or flu. So this isn't political. I'm not here to argue about it. I'm just telling you from my point of view, it kicked my butt. All right, enough about that. Let's talk about a hospital tank. So today, a hospital tank or quarantine tank. How to set one up, how to maintain one. So the first thing you need to figure out is why do you need one? <coughs> I'm fine. <clears throat> other than the Rona. So you, anytime you buy new fish, you really should be quarantining them. Also, if you have fish and one of them gets sick, you want to remove it from the main show tank and put it in a hospital tank so you can treat and cure it, especially if it's something that's um, not highly contagious, right? If it's contagious, you're going to want to treat the whole thing anyway. But And so <clears throat> when you buy new fish, whether you buy them from your local fish store, a big box store, or me, or another online retailer, the stress from being netted out, put in a bag, shipped cross country, or driven however long it takes you to get to your local fish store, that stress can lower the fish's immune system. And then if they have anything lingering that their body's been fighting off and they've been, you know, winning the fight, then they get stressed, their immune system gets weakened, and boom, it pops up. Ick, calminaris, any number of things. That's why you want to treat them. Because hopefully in quarantine, you'll be able to see what they have and treat accordingly. Now, in my quarantine setup, I'll put a link up here to the video I did, um, but it's very simple. Every fish that comes in my fish room, whether it's from a well-known, healthy, healthy breeder, or overseas, I treat virtually the same, okay? I put, I use three meds, a trio of meds, and I'll go over those in a minute, in a tank by themselves. I put the meds in, and then, for one week, and then I observe. I put the meds in as per the package directions one time, then I observe for a week. That's my quarantine procedure. Now, if I happen to see something during the quarantine, it pops up, commonaris pops up, flukes, whatever, I treat accordingly just for that. Okay? Now, let's talk about how to set up a quarantine tank. I'll talk about the meds as well, but first thing, you need some sort of vessel to hold your quarantine fish. Do you need a fish tank? No. Fish tank is best because the glass box or acrylic box makes it easy to view and see the fish, but you could do with something as small as this little, you know, uh, uh, plastic shoe box. I don't know how big this is, but uh, this is all you need. A couple bucks at Walmart or Target or wherever you want to shop, that's it. Now, obviously the bigger the better in most cases, except when it comes to quarantine, and here's why. Fish medicine is quite expensive. And if you're going to have to treat, you want the smallest volume of water you can treat for. Another reason for a hospital tank. So <clears throat> something like this would be good for a pair or a trio of guppies, um, maybe a couple of quarries or something like that. Even six tetras for a week would be fine in something like that. Anything more than that, I'd go bigger, but I wouldn't go too big. And just remember, you can go bigger, but you don't have to fill up all the water. You just need to know what the water volume is so you can use the correct amount of medication. Okay? Now, what else do you need in here? And a lot of times we, I see on Facebook and I get the question, well, how do you maintain a, a quarantine tank? How do you maintain the cycle? Well, first of all, you have to know about the nitrogen cycle and how it works 
and where the beneficial bacteria lives. Virtually no beneficial bacteria live in the water column. So you're not cycling the water or the tank. It's really the filter. And in my case, I like sponge filters for this, and I'll explain why. In all of my tanks, I have sponge filters. In most of my tanks, I have more than one sponge filter. That's because I do sell them on my website, you know, seeded sponge filters. But also, if I have to set up a quarantine tank, or I have to set up a new tank, or I have to... <coughs> really, I'm fine. Or I have to... Uh, overpopulate a tank so I need extra filtration I can take a sponge filter from one or two tanks boom instant cycle I have a video on how to instant cycle a tank I'll put that link up here as well um, also down below I'll put all the links to the videos that really are the basics of quarantining the quarantine video how to instant cycle a tank uh, a video on the nitrogen cycle anything else I can think of that'll help you out I've done videos on them all and remember I'm just a handsome, funny, dumb guy with a camera, so I try to keep it as dumb as possible. So if you're new or it's hard for you to understand some of the other people that talk about this stuff because they use big words, I try to explain it pretty simply. Um, all right, so you have your tank, and I like the sponge filter. Take a small sponge filter from an established tank. Let's say you have your main tank and you have a hang on back or a canister filter, just add a sponge filter. Put it in the corner, little USB uh, air pump from Aquarium Co-op. I love them, by the way. I'll put a link down below for those. Um, they're easy to maintain, they're quiet, they work great. And now you have a cycle filter that you can add to your hospital tank. And boom, instant cycle. Um, another thing you're gonna need is an aquarium heater. And I recommend a separate aquarium heater, a separate net as well. As a matter of fact, wherever you're going to keep your hospital tank, I would recommend keeping it away from your main show tank or any of your other tanks because you don't want to risk cross-contamination. So I recommend a heater because some things like it, you're going to want to raise the temperature a little bit. And so you're going to need a heater. And you don't want to pull your main heater out, especially because it's probably going to be too big. And you're going to need it for that tank. So buy a separate heater, a separate net, keep everything together, away from everything else, and you're good. All right, so now let's talk about the actual medicine that I talked about before. I use three separate meds. I use them all three at the same time. Treat as per the package directions the first time. And then I observe for one week in the quarantine tank or hospital tank, whatever you want to call it. And what I do is I just observe and I look for any signs of anything. If I see signs of ick or calminaris or flukes or whatever, dropsy, I treat specifically for that problem. If I don't see anything in the week that they're in the tank, they go in the main tank or they go in the show tank or they go in their regular tank, whatever it is. Or uh, I wait another week and they're ready to sell. That's what I do. Now the medicines I use are uh, a med trio that um, treats sort of everything that, that usually you can treat for quickly without too much of a hassle. So basically internal parasites, bacteria, both external and internal, uh, and ick and things that live on the outside. So we treat inside, outside, gram positive, gram negative, everything. And this is what I do, and this is what works for me. It's important to note here, folks, this is what works for me. Many other people have adopted it, and that's cool. If it doesn't work for you or you do something else, that's fine. There's multiple ways to do things in this hobby. It's not like I'm a stuck-up, you know, fake biologist that's telling you what to do. I've actually done this. It works. Just remember many ways to do things. So the first medicine I use that treats gram positive and gram negative bacteria is a uh, neutral furazone, which is the same ingredient in Furan 2, but Furan 2 for me, API, I've heard is very hard to get. It's getting pretty spendy. So it's kind of like the generic name of the medicine. Uh, again, it treats gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So it's a good broad spectrum antibiotic. The second thing I use and I treat for internal parasites, specifically Calminaris worms, but all internal parasites, is uh, Expel P by um, Fritz. Yeah. And uh, it's basically Levamisole, but I treat the water column 
with it and uh, at the same time I'm looking to see if there's anything coming out of the fish's butthole. And if there is, I treat specifically for that. I'll, I'll probably go on to the, the actual Levamisol flake food or Fembendazole flake food uh, that I will use instead of the Levamisol, the Expel P. All right? The last thing that I use is Fix Ick, which is also Fritz's brand of Ick medicine. Now, uh, just a quick note, if you use Ickex, which is the Aquarium Solutions, which is the Hakari brand, which is the most common Ick medicine, I've, as far as I can tell, if you use it with Prime, it, it doesn't work. Any of the sulfur-based water dechlorinators, it doesn't work. That's on Seachem's website, that's on Hakari's website or Aquarium Solutions website. I'm not just making it up, it's not just Fritz trying to sell their stuff. It's an actual fact. So. If you treated for it before using ICX and you've used Seachem Prime and you're wondering why it's not working, that's why. So I like the Fix Ick better. Now, just a note, <coughs> with Fix Ick, you shouldn't use it with inverts. So any snails or, or uh, uh, shrimp, it could be harmful. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not a shrimp or a snail guy. I don't know how to fix it without that, so that's on you. Um, the other thing is, it's blue and it stains, so just be careful, you know, where you pour it or if it gets on your hands or clothes. So those are the three medicines I use. I do buy them at KGE Aquatics. I know he has a deal if you buy the trio. Check out KGEAquatics.com. Keith is a good friend of mine, veteran-owned, family-run business, great service, and also he's not a snowflake, so, uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I'm not mixing any, missing anything. So let's just go over. You need a container. Glass box is fine, but any cheap Sterilite or Rubbermaid container is fine. I like the smallest as possible because you, you'll use less meds, it'll be cheaper. I recommend a sponge filter. Just put a sponge filter and use an aquarium co-op or any uh, Air pump, I like the Aquarium Co-op Nano, USB air pumps, they're cheap, they're easy, whatever. Sponge filter, the air pump in your main tank, make sure that thing is cycled. When you start your uh, uh, hospital tank or quarantine tank, you just boom, take everything, put it in the, in the hospital tank, put your fish in, put your meds in, observe. Also, when you're done, when quarantine is over with, what should you do? Well, I would sterilize everything. I'd take that that uh, sponge filter. I use a 10% bleach solution. I'd clean it out. I'd rinse it multiple, multiple times. Then I'd let it air dry. Same thing with the heater, with the net, with the actual container. I'd follow that procedure for everything. I'd let everything dry, if possible, in the sun. And then just put it away. Put your air pump. Change the air, ho air line, by the way, if you put it in a quarantine tank. That's, a, that's something a lot of people forget. Uh, you can certainly... Uh, sanitize it, but it's cheap enough I would just cut the piece and use a new one. No, no reason to risk anything. Uh, so then you just put your air pump back in your main tank, let it cycle five, six weeks, boom, then you're done. That's it. Any comments or questions, you know, leave them down below. And if you like this kind of contact, plus you find me humorous or, you know, you learned something, please consider subscribing and telling all your friends. Have a great day, everyone. Nothing other, nothing else out of, excuse me. And the first medicine, the first medicine I use. Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Sorry about the week without videos, but I had the Rona and it kicked my butt. Today, no.